You are now looking at 60 Starlink satellites being launched into space. Over the next few decades, Elon Musk is hoping to launch 42,000 satellites into space. That's a lot. To put that in perspective, here is the Earth. The little bright dots you see represent the exact location of every satellite in the Earth's orbit. They all come to a total of 19,092 satellites. Starlink is planning on launching more than double this number. According to CNBC, nearly half of the population on Earth does not have access to the Internet. And in the U.S. alone, more than 14 million people still don't have Internet service at home, according to the FCC. This number surpasses the entire population of these 13 states combined. Given the high price of laying cable or fiber optics, which can be as much as $20,000 a kilometer, Internet providers prefer installing Internet cables in more populated areas where the demand is higher, leaving many rural areas offline. Satellite Internets can reach these areas, but traditional satellite Internet is provided by a single satellite that orbits 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. That means that this satellite can reach places that cable cannot get. But since that one satellite is meant to service a lot of people, its data capabilities are limited, which then limits connection speeds. Plus, that signal must travel a long way, creating a lot of lags, also known as high latency. This is where Starlink comes in. Starlink is a satellite internet constellation engineered by SpaceX with a goal to provide satellite internet with high speeds and latency as low as 20 milliseconds in most locations around the globe. The development of Starlink began back in 2015 when Elon Musk stated that there is an unmet demand for low-cost global broadband internet. He felt that this demand was high enough to be profitable. The basis of Starlink's satellite internet service includes three main components, the satellite, ground terminals, and a dish. Starlink customers pay $499 for the hardware needed to connect to the network plus $99 a month for service. Currently, there are no contracts or data usage caps. So far, SpaceX has launched more than 1,500 satellites into orbit and plans to have 4,425 satellites in orbit by 2024. By the time SpaceX is done building up its satellite constellation, the company will have launched 42,000 satellites into orbit. Now, let's talk about these satellites. Making these Starlink satellites costs around $300,000. Because SpaceX builds their own satellites, they build them with some cool features, like the Krypton plasma thrusters that help the satellites to autonomously avoid space debris and automatically correct their trajectory. The current satellite design is built with flat solar panels that are retractable, multiple antennas, and a solar array. These retractable solar panels are essential as they allow SpaceX to stack multiple satellites in a single stack. Weighing 227 kilograms, these internet beaming satellites get put into space by SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which usually releases 60 satellites per launch. The first 1,500 Starlink satellites operate in orbit of 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface, spread into 24 orbital planes, and are inclined at 53 degrees to the equator. Unlike traditional satellites, which are approximately the same size as a school bus and orbit 36,000 kilometers above the Earth, Starlink satellites are much smaller and orbit about 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The satellites being this close to the Earth's surface means that they can only cover a small part of the Earth, which is why Starlink needs so many. On the other side, SpaceX claims that lower orbit systems allow the signal to travel a shorter distance, allowing to have a lower signal delay, also known as low latency. Latency is very important for things like gaming, streaming, and video conferencing. Starlink Internet currently meets and exceeds speeds of 100 megabits a second for downloads and 20 megabits a second for uploads, with a median latency of 45 milliseconds. Elon Musk has said that these speeds are expected to double as more satellites are launched into orbit. Starlink targets to have speeds that exceed 1,000 megabits a second, or 1 gigabit a second. To pull this off, the company is developing a technology called Intersatellite Links. The way this works is that each satellite has an optical sensor, which is basically a laser that points from one satellite to another optical sensor on another satellite, creating an unseen path that gives a stable connection between satellites. 
The benefits of having such a technology is that if you have a stable connection between thousands of satellites, you can easily increase the speed because you are now moving signals from one satellite to another at the speed of light rather than the speed of fiber optics that are used on the ground. This technology will be used in the new Starlink satellites version 2.0. The current version of Starlink satellites can send data directly to your dish, although it has multiple steps that severely slow it down. The current Starlink satellite must pass data through ground stations called gateways. These stations exchange signals with Starlink, connecting the service to existing cabling as the satellites cannot reach everywhere. However, version 2.0 will make things easier. Suddenly, Starlink satellites will not have to connect to ground stations to receive and transmit data. Instead, all they will have to do is connect to another satellite directly and send data where they want. By using inter-satellite links, data can roam anywhere in the world at the speed of light as long as there is a Starlink satellite close enough. Dimension-wise, Starlink V2 will measure about 7 meters long and weigh 1.25 tons. This makes them four times heavier than the current satellites. The current Starlink satellites are carried to space by the Falcon 9 in batches of 60 at a time, so using the same rocket for V2 would be limited to about 15 satellites per launch. This is why SpaceX is planning to take full advantage of the 100 metric tons lift of the Starship and Super Heavy to use it to launch Starlink V2 into space. It is estimated that Starlink will need more than 100 ground stations in the U.S. But if the inter-satellite links technology is successful, Starlink is going to need less of these ground stations, also reducing the complexity of the overall system. On the consumer side, installing Starlink hardware is simple. The hardware needed to access the services are shipped in a box that includes the Starlink dish, a router, a power supply unit, and a tripod to mount the dish on. In addition, Starlink has an app that walks you through all the steps to set up your equipment. The Starlink dish is motorized, helping it to reorient itself to stay aligned with the satellites overhead as they move in orbit. The dish is also built with a heating element to melt snow on its surface. Having a constellation of satellites providing internet in every corner of the globe, ships and planes will stay connected wherever they are, and vehicles will always be connected to the internet, hence improving their self-driving features regardless of their location. We will also see rapid growth in the internet of things. SpaceX is betting big on Starlink as it is the golden ticket to Elon Musk's mission to Mars. The key to colonizing Mars is Starship. The massive rocket is meant to be reusable and capable of launching up to 100 tons of cargo at once. Elon Musk estimated that it would cost around $5 billion to complete the Starship program. This is where Starlink comes in. Starlink is trying to grab just a small fraction of a one trillion telecommunication industry around the world. If SpaceX can achieve this, it can gain a net revenue of 30 to 50 billion per year. SpaceX president Gwen Shotwell says that money would be enough to fund the development of Starlink, Starship, and the Mars mission. This is a growing sector, and there is a huge hunger for investment in satellite internet. The sector could be worth 412 billion by 2040. The U.S. is investing a lot into Starlink. In 2020, the FCC awarded Starlink nearly $1 billion in subsidies to bring internet to rural areas. Additionally, in late March 2021, President Joe Biden said that his administration would spend $100 billion to expand the broadband access to Americans as part of its $2 trillion infrastructure plan. SpaceX has also been in talks with the UK, where Starlink could earn funding as part of the $6.9 billion internet infrastructure plan, aka Project Gigabit. Starlink has great potential provided they can overcome some major challenges. One of the major challenges of building a new satellite network is that all the capital expenditures need to go up front before even having their first paying customers, and that creates a tough financial situation to pay for the existing satellite constellation and the upcoming satellite launches. SpaceX estimates that it will cost around $10 billion to get Starlink at an operational stage. Currently, Starlink is still in early development. That is why Starlink makes it clear that there may be periods when customers will experience no connectivity at all. But services will improve over time as more satellites are launched. Having so many satellites launched into orbit also comes with its own set of problems. So, if you looked up after the launch of Starlink satellites, you would see what looks like shooting stars moving in a perfect line going across the sky. People call them Starlink trains. 
As many of these satellites kept being launched and covering different parts of the sky, Starlink started getting backlashes from astronomers saying that there are too many satellites that are being launched into space. And because they reflect light, they become too bright, and it makes it hard for astronomers to take pictures of space. This image illustrates the problem. The telescope was meant to take images of the comet known as Neowise, which has been closer to Earth in the past two years more than at any point in the last 6,000 years. To their surprise, astrophotographers from NASA found that the telescope also captured light trails of Starlink satellites. Although some image editing tools can be used to remove the light trails, it is not always 100% effective. Astronomers claim that this might affect astronomy and could potentially give wrong information to astronomers when studying potential cosmic threats, like comets. Additionally, astronomers suggest that adding 42,000 satellites into Earth's orbit will furthermore increase space junk. The concern is that two satellites might collide and then create more debris that will collide with other satellites, which will then create an infinite loop of space objects crashing into each other, resulting in a Kessler syndrome. SpaceX has not ignored these problems. The American Astronomical Society has contacted SpaceX regarding the issues. Since then, SpaceX has dedicated a team to finding solutions to these problems. Initially, SpaceX tried to paint the reflective materials on the satellite black, but the satellites were still too bright, and since the panels were not reflective anymore, the material absorbs most of the light, making them very hot. In response, SpaceX came up with a design known as sun visors. They help keep the reflectivity of the solar panels from creating a lot of brightness, while also changing the orientation of the satellites so that the reflected sunlight can be redirected away from the Earth. There are currently about 19,092 satellites in Earth's orbit. If Starlink is to launch all the planned 42,000 satellites, SpaceX will be responsible for the majority of objects in space. To make sure that a scenario like the Kessler Syndrome does not happen, SpaceX plans to deorbit satellites that are nearing the end of their life by pushing them back into the Earth's atmosphere where they will burn out during re-entry. To do this, SpaceX designed their satellites with propulsion systems that are more than sufficient to deorbit a satellite. Although there has never been a Kessler Syndrome before, in the case where communication is lost with a satellite, which has happened before, this could end up creating one. SpaceX is currently the leader in the low Earth orbit satellite internet, but competition is coming. Amazon has stated that it will invest over $10 billion in its satellite internet network known as Project Kuiper. UK satellite maker OneWeb, which is backed by Airbus and Richard Branson, also has 146 internet satellites in orbit. And finally, Canadian satellite company Telesat will begin commercial services for its satellite internet in the second half of 2023. If Starlink is successful, it will not only make SpaceX's mission to Mars a reality, but it will also pave the way to building a satellite constellation on Mars, creating a multi-planetary satellite constellation. If you found this video insightful, go ahead and leave us a like and subscribe to the channel for more informative content, and join the conversation in the comments below. Let us know what your thoughts are on the Starlink satellite constellation. Do you plan on getting Starlink services, or do you already have access to Starlink Internet? If so, what's your experience like? Let us know, we would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.